So thank you so much uh, for joining. Uh, so we've got Dong Wei Li. Is that how you pronounce your name? Yeah, yeah, yes. Okay, perfect. Um, who is a UK marketing lead at Women in AI. Uh, she went to the University of Glasgow and had, holds an MBA um, and has a really, really strong background in consulting and auditing and offers a comprehensive uh, set of skills and a proven track record across PR, business development, business intelligence, strategy, branding, and the list goes on. Um, really interested in your work at Women in AI. So that started in August 2023, so this, this year. Um, could you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, yeah, no problem. So uh, I um, met them in previous AI event, and uh, I had an initial talk with them, and they are uh, really interested to bring me on board because I work in AI tech marketing for a while. And uh, they basically, they, this is a global AI organization. So 135 countries and uh, has the AI professionals globally, like over 13,000. And they do like webinars, talks, events, and uh, mentoring program. So we partnered together. Um, I joined them afterwards. Uh, and uh, we, uh, we partner Cogas Tech Festival and another AI tech company called GoodNotes and another VC uh, startup grind. So we had uh, like AI education uh, and career development event in Kogas Tech Festival. So it's been really great to join them and uh, we will partner together um, in other uh, AI tech event and we'll host more like webinars uh, event in the future in London and globally. Fantastic. And, and I got it wrong. Sorry. It was founded in 2016 and the HQ is actually in Paris. And yeah, there are 170 employees or, you know, contributors in the community. So very large organization. Yeah, great. I can share my presentation. Sure. Ooh. Hey, you're all set. Uh, can you guys see me screen? Yes, I can see. You. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, today I will talk about like AI in tech marketing and uh, advertising. Uh, so yeah, this is like my um background, and thank you just to introduce that. So I uh, basically I studied my career in different consulting, and then study MBA and uh, working at uh, tech marketing. Uh, for a while, and now I joined the Women in AI as the UK marketing lead. Uh, so, in during my work, I use uh, like AI quite a lot because I work in the AI tech company, so they have like, AI tech software. And uh, during my day to day work, I also use like uh, uh, JAI tools for marketing use, like. Uh, website content, social media, email marketing, yeah. and I also use like uh, AI tools uh, for the business study use. Um, it's really um, like improve my day-to-day -day work, like improve my our company's marketing ROI by optimizing the content and timing of the digital marketing. And we also use the programmatic advertising and media buying. So, uh, for our like media buying, and we can get the predictive analytics by generating the report and uh, forecast the KPI. So yeah, 
Um, so AI is really influencing our like marketing landscape and in different ways. Um, I use like content personalization and content creation. So we increase the uh, improve the marketing ROI by optimizing the marketing content and timing. So we do like media buying and the programmatic advertising by using the AI. And really like target our audience to find the right audience to target when do the media buying side. And uh, we also do like marketing automation uh, when like have the, like some admin work. So come to the data analysis. Uh, I we use the like uh, AI software to analyze the data. Uh, we we partner with Cantor and Nielsen, these two market research company. Uh, Cantor provide us the consumer uh, database. It's a really huge. Uh, so we we analyze the like consumer data um, to target the right audience for our client. And uh, Nielsen is a uh, uh, database, also market research company, they provide database for us for the uh, media buying sites, like advertisers, uh, advertising data, uh, marketing data. So we also use this data to analyze. So who will um, do use which agency to uh, target which, which kind of audience and how much money do they spend and like annually or quarterly uh, like on what types of media when they um, purchase the like global media. So um, by using the AI, we can really improve like our day-to-day -day work. So uh, during my work, I use the AI tools to use different ways like blogs, websites, social media, email, um, and create like a um, different content and uh, like logo um, packaging so it's really um like really transform my ways of working i went to ai uh, event quite a lot i also organized ai event and uh, um, in this year, I went to like London Tech Week and also the AI Summit London. And uh, because I work in AI, and also we in our company, we organize the AI event. Uh, mainly AI marketing and advertising partner with other um, media companies. And also I, all the, I also lead the Women in AI organization. So we uh, sometimes we run an AI event in London, also partner with uh, different tech festivals. So um, I I think it's really um uh, it's really great to go to this kind of AI event, but also in the another side, like regulation, we really need to like like ensure AI is really benefit our humanity, not the like to end the humanity. So it comes to education side, uh, I think AI will enable like more industries to uh, create more new jobs than like lose the job for us. So I think uh, we can use the right AI tools to uh, in our workways and uh, not limited to marketing and also different sectors like FinTech, uh, deep tech, clear tech, and different industry, we can also use AI to uh, create our, uh, transform different ways in working. So how can an organization to prepare the data for an AI advertising future? So I think AI is also a great way when targeting the the advertisement side. So we can test the data and reinforce them and uh, let the uh, machine learning to learn our uh, ways when targeting the audience and when do the media reporting and media buying. So can also create the feedback and use our next, next budget to use it wisely when doing the media advertising. 
So from plan, purchase, execute, and learn. So we can use AI advertising to uh, remove the guesswork and uh, reduce the wasted time and frustration and also reduce the wasted budget. So when doing the AI advertising, we can uh, like focus on different types of the media, like radio, outdoor, print, social, TV, digital. Uh, imagine when we do the AI advertising. So uh, the traditional way will be like, uh, go to the Google and search which media companies or which media titles you really want to focus on. Or maybe in a biased way, you, maybe you choose the media companies that you used to work with or you're familiar with. But use the AI advertising, you can uh, use the huge database and uh, use, use the machine learning, they can calculate or they can help you to understand better uh, which the right way that you can choose. You're not limited to uh, your knowledge when doing the media buying. So it can really uh, fast to execute and minimize the waste when, when in terms of the budget and can learn from the previous campaigns. Um, so uh, in the research, like when do the media buying, five different media types will be better when ter in terms of the advertising ROI. If do the media, only one media type, so it won't to maximize your media campaign. So better to like to do the mix, mix media buying. Uh, so there's different types of in terms of the AI advertising. So uh, like print, TV, digital, radio, outdoor. And I used to work in an AI ad tech company and uh, they basically, they partner with uh, over 10,000 media titles uh, globally. So they can uh, use the AI advertising software to 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 calculate so we which media companies that for you is the best to use because there are so many going on in the media world and so many ads and uh, by using the AI advertising so you could um, have the solve this kind of uh, ad data explosion problem. So uh, when do the uh, advertising, so from the media seller to buyer to agency, um, so when a seller will be like buy decision, but time consuming. And when media buying is really key that you have the you have the right tool when when do the media buying and not just to, based on your experience or the preferred channels an agency maybe sometimes uh, they have longer lead time or have significant ad spending So in terms of the advertisers, uh, they use like a huge database when planning. But to be honest, normally um, if a company want to do the media buying, uh, they couldn't access the huge database. So sometimes they need to use the third party tool or partner with the different agency or companies to access this huge database. Because um, to be honest, the huge database like content and use is quite expensive to buy so can can analyze this data and uh, um, also better use for the business kpi so this is a just example of the like one ai machine learning advertising tool that they can generate the different types of the media. So when you're buying. Uh, so in conclusion, if you do the AI advertising 
and you can streamline the process, reduce your advertising waste, and also um, connect with your business KPI. Uh, some software also integrate like Power BI or Tableau. They can generate the report uh, like automatically and dashboards. And by using the marketing mix modeling, you can uh, see the dashboards like in different terms of the media types, like which spending and uh, uh, and also connect with the future KPI. It also uh, is really measurable and transparent and the platform and technology can use to support you in different ways when doing the advertising. So I think the future in AI advertising like will be um, like data analytics for sure, like uh, to use different like software, uh, whether AI or not AI to um, fast, fast track the media buying process and also predict the future KPI. When, when you can predict the future KPI for example, if you uh, cut down some budget in one type of media and uh, by predicting the future KPI, you can see like in the future, like in next few months or next year, uh, which part of the uh, growth, which part of the industry uh, or audience that you target will have the huge better growth or lower growth. So AI uh, is really like um, in different industry, um, like I just talked about like AI in MarTech, AdTech, when doing the like uh, uh, media buying, advertising. So it can, can be used in different ways, like in programmatic advertising, chat box and virtual assistance, real-time ad performance optimization, testing and experimentation, and also in different industry like clear tech, deep tech. It's another different ways when using the AI, like climate modeling or carbon capture and storage and also like in FinTech. So like uh, risk assessment and fraud detection. So it really depends on uh, what industry are you in and what types of way of AI that you want to use in your business. Thank you. So yeah, this is my- um, Thank you, that was fantastic. Yeah. Um, so how do you see AI and advertising evolving over the next, you know, five, five years, let's say? I think uh, five years. I think we'll have more and more like AI tech, ad tech software, uh, like Boomi. For example, I, I work in AI ad tech for a while. So I can see like uh, our competitors and uh, different industry. Mm -hmm. uh, so they also really transforming the way that doing the media buying or purchasing. So I think will be more um, AI software or, yeah, come into use. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And then um, in terms of like how we target people, do you think it's there's demographics, the psychographics? Do you, do you think we're going to move more like more into the psychographic side of things, like understanding the behavior of uh, of users and their psychological profile and targeting them on that side of things? Yeah. Yes, I think uh, it's a big data world, to be honest. When do the media buying, uh, the key point is that you need to really know what's your customer or your client uh, mm -hmm. where is where are them and uh, you want to target them you need to like have the huge data uh, to analyze the their behavior their ways or where we are they so it's really uh, need to use different data 
to mm -hmm. analyze these behaviors. Do you think um, as more and more young people are in games that advertisers are going to want to target um, young people in games? And if you look at programmatic advertising, it's so fast, they're making all these decisions, it's changing all the time. Whereas if you're putting, if you're building something into a game, you might have the brand licensing deal, which takes a long time, then you have to develop it. Do you, do you think we'll get to a stage where, you know, even there'll be advertising in games, which is as fast as what we see on a social media post banner? Uh, I think in gaming industry also, I think a few weeks ago, I went to uh, the digital, London Digital Week, and also under the London Fashion Week. So they have some gaming, like in the, in terms of like AI. I think gaming is another booming industry in, in terms of using the AI, uh, the social media one. I think more and more people, young people will like, maybe know more about AI when they using AI, like, or know about on the social media side. Yeah, no, really, really interesting. And then in terms of platforms, like all around the world, um, I've been looking also at um, platforms like Red and things like that. Do you think it's important for um, advertisers to look at lots of different platforms so not just facebook but to try and target people i don't know on tiktok and it's such a fractured market though there are so many platforms so what's the best solution there for them to you know really access markets but when it's so fractured across different platforms i think it really depends on uh, what's your customer or audience based uh, you just mentioned red is it's a Chinese app, and uh, if you if you if your customer or client is not based in China, I think you don't need to use that. I I used to grow up in China for for quite a long time, and then I moved to the UK. So I think also Western media and Eastern media is very um sometimes very distant from each other and have different opinion views in one certain, in terms of one certain things. And I I don't use TikTok quite a lot, but TikTok, um, they have different version uh, in China. And uh, when, the, when the brands, they target the people, so you really need to understand where your customer and uh, client's based. For example, like uh, in the UK, if you want to uh, extend your business in China, you can use the like WeChat, Red, or Douyin. It's the it's the version of the another. Uh, it's a version of the TikTok. If you if you like want to target the audience in the like Europe or USA or English countries, it's more like Facebook, Instagram. Fantastic! Great answer. Thank you very much. Um. So we have one more uh, talk of the day, but that is going to be in an hour's time. So feel free to, to stay on the call or come back in a bit later. Um, and that is going to be with Farthik Alam. Um, and the focus of that one is going to be uh, data privacy and security in the age of big data and AI. Um, and focusing on data anonymization encryption, compliance, data protection, um, in order to be uh, compliant with GDPR and how to safeguard sensitive information of, of customers like their financial information and, you know, if you're in healthcare, the bio information, et cetera, et cetera. So be, please do tune back for that because I think that's one of the biggest blockers, especially for enterprise to move into the space is around data privacy, um, and compliance issues. Okay, see you guys later.